Brilliant. Thank you very much again. Okay, so, how does this work? How is it that our eyes can be so easily misdirected and deceived by the magician? And one of the things that's quite important for this is that the way our eyes work is not at all like we think it is. So when we look out at the visual scene, and this is a typical look over the tape, right? <laughs> <laughs> what you think you see is that you take in everything around you in complete detail. And as we look around the scene, it feels rather like our eyes are panning around smoothly like a video camera. However, the reality of seeing is nothing like this at all. In fact, rather than taking in everything around us in complete detail, we only have a very small window of clear vision right in the centre of where we're looking. And that window of clear vision is only about the size of your thumbnail held at arm's length. So it really is very small. And as we go out from that into our peripheral vision, things become more and more blurry. So that really when we look out over the river, what we see is something more like this. Now a consequence of this is that if we want to look at these sailboats down here, we're going to have to move this window of clear vision over here because we just don't have that information in our peripheral vision. But then there's a problem. And the problem is that our eyes basically don't work very well when they're moving. Okay? And as soon as we start to move our eyes, things become blurry. Now, we can demonstrate this. So this is some, my version of audience participation. If you put your hands up like this. Okay, now put your thumb up. Yeah. Look at your thumbnail. Keep looking at your thumbnail, but start to move your hands slowly from side to side. Now, keeping looking at your thumbnail, notice what happens to the background. And you should see that even at quite slow movements, everything in the background becomes very blurry. Do you agree? This is the problem. As soon as we start to move our eyes, we don't see well. So the solution to this is that rather than keeping our eyes moving continuously like it feels, we move our eyes as quickly as possible in a series of rapid jerks. And each of these jerks lasts only a few hundredths of a second. And during these jerks, we don't see anything at all. Now what's, ama what's amazing about this really is that um, these things are going on, these jerks are going on around three to four times in every second of our waking lives, and yet we're not aware of them. And to demonstrate that they really do happen, I want you to turn to your partner now, turn to the person sitting next to you. It's slightly awkward if you're in a three. Um, <laughs> if you haven't met the person sitting next to you before, this is an interesting way to meet. <laughs> what I want is for everyone on this side of the pairs to look past your partner and try to move your eyes as smoothly as possible over the far wall. Now the other person, I want you to look very closely at their eyes and see how they're really moving, even when they try to move them smoothly. Okay, what do you see? How are the eyes move? Yeah, like this. It's a series of jerks, and even when you try to move your eyes as smoothly as you can, we just can't do it. This isn't how vision works. So hang on. The idea of this was to try and use a scientific approach to understand uh, what's going on with perception. But here we see that actually by understanding how the eyes work, we're getting further away from understanding our experience. Because now we can see that the eyes are giving this rather jerky and disjointed input, which is actually largely blurry. And somehow we still have this experience of the smooth movie-like perception in the mind. So the question that psychologists have been interested in for a long time now is trying to understand how the brain takes that weird input and turns it into the smooth experience that we have. And for a long time, psychologists thought they had this one sorted. What they thought was that you could take the information from between each of these little jerks of the eye, when the eye is staying relatively still, keep them in the brain and stick them together so that over a few looks around the world, you could start to build up a composite picture of our entire environment. So the idea was that we were building a picture in the brain. This is a very appealing idea, and it would explain our experience. But is, it, is this the way that the brain works? And we can test this. We can test this with a rather uh, simple experiment based on spot the difference. Okay. So what you're going to see in a couple of examples in a moment is you're going to see a photograph of a scene it's going to be on the screen for about half a second. It will then disappear, and the screen will be blank for about a third of a second. 
and then the image will return, but something will be different, just one thing. In this case, it's the height of the bar between the people having dinner. That then disappears, and you go back to the beginning. So you're going to see a flickering movie between <coughs> these two versions. Okay, now the logic of this experiment is that if we really were keeping a faithful record of everything that we see, this should be an easy task. Because we should look at this first one and take a copy of it and store it in the brain. Now when the second one appears, we can compare what we're seeing with what we've got stored in the brain and it should be trivial. Now what I want you to do on this next example is not to call out initially, but to put your hands up when you see what the difference is. Now if all the old theories of vision are right, this we should all get instantly. <laughs> yeah, you were in my class, you don't have <laughs> If you're, find, if you're finding this hard, have a look around the room and see how many hands are up. Okay? You're not alone. This is a very difficult task. Okay. Actually, so I saw that you just put your hand up. Oh, you've seen it before. Still, you, okay, someone who hasn't seen it before, what's changing? It's the engine on the wing of this airplane. Okay, now, once it's pointed out, it's amazing to believe that you couldn't see it. Okay? It's a very obvious thing, but we don't detect it. And this we can see over and over again. I'm going to show you another example that my students at the back have already seen, so they don't count. Uh, so once again, I want you to uh, put your hands up when you see the change in this scene. I'm glad people are being a little bit slower on this one, because I find this one really hard. Okay, yep, you got it. What, what do you see? Black screen on the... Um on the Mercedes. Yeah, yeah it's this windscreen here. And it's actually a big change in terms of brightness. It's going from very bright to very dark. Okay. And over and over again, we could show that these are things that are extremely difficult to do. But this isn't something that we only see in this rather odd and artificial setting of flickering pictures. We can also see it in more realistic settings. So, for example, we can see this going on when we watch movies. So, in this... Um, rather odd little clip that you're about to see, there's going to be a conversation between two people and the angle of the camera viewing this conversation is going to keep changing. Now, every time it changes, there's going to be at least one change to the scene. I want you to try and keep track of how many of these things happen, and I'll see how you do them in a minute. This has an appalling soundtrack, but unfortunately I couldn't get it picked up the top. <laughs> okay, right, so what I want to do is I want to get you to put your hands up if you saw at least two changes, two or more changes. Okay, how about three or more? How about four or more? <coughs> Five? Not many hands still up. One hand up, in fact. There were ten. <laughs> now, I'm going to have to come over and look over here, because I watch this video all the time, <coughs> uh, but I still can't tell you what all of the ten are it, faithfully every time I watch this video. But let's have a go. I'm going to show it again. The things to keep an eye on are her scarf, the colour of these plates, the fact that this one has food on and this one doesn't, there's a spoon here, and the cups are this way round. That one has a pan and that one doesn't. <sighs> Let's try it. Call out if you see things I don't. The scarf is gone. One. The, the scarf's back, that's two. Nothing's changed here, though. <coughs> Three. No, I'm going to go, okay. White plates. Yeah. They're back again. We're up to five. Yeah, they're ready again. Now, the food's changed size. That's six. The cups have changed size. That's seven. And the spoon has moved. That's eight. Yeah, so that, that one counts as one, because the food switched plates. But I only got to eight there. So it's really very difficult to spot these changes. Does anyone work as a continuity editor? <laughs>